guys, welcome back to another video all about your financial well-being. And today we're gonna to be discussing the topic of living below your means. Now, lots of people are finding themselves looking into ways to save money and to cut back. But over here on this channel, your girl has been talking about living your best life on a budget for years. And I am gonna give you loads of practical and informative strategic advice to be able to put into your day-to-day -day life to help you save money and live below your means. So whether you are a low-income family, low-income person on their own, or maybe you have lots of money coming in, but actually you'd like to be a bit more sensible with it and work towards either financial freedom or financial independence or just better financial financial well-being. Throughout the last few years of my own journey of working towards a better financial well-being, I have discovered so many things about myself and we have created this wonderful community here of like-minded people that are all looking to live better, spend less money, be more frugal, perhaps invest in their future. And I found such a brilliant community with you guys. So if you are new here, then definitely check out the other videos here on this channel. There's hundreds of videos to help you earn more money, save more money, and invest your money, live more mindfully, live more sustainably, and latterly live slower because I feel like there's a massive connection between being frugal and saving your money and also making sure that you are slower and enjoying life. So if you are new here and you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I do upload two to three times a week, lots of different videos here on this channel and I'd love to have you here in the community as a subscriber. I'm Lara, if you are new to this channel, welcome to anybody new recently. But for today, let's talk about living below your means, practical strategic advice to help you live better, save more money, reduce your debt perhaps, and achieve better financial stability for your future. So grab a cup up, notepad and pen, and let's get into the video. So if you are new to my channel, it will not come as a news flash or brand new information to be creating a budget. Now, even if you are into this and you love budgeting, and if you aren't, I have lots of videos on how to get started with creating a budget, how to budget. But if you are new to this and you're looking for better financial stability in your future, budgeting is the number one tool that is gonna help you get on top of it. So when I talk about budgeting, it's not just about budgeting for the big things or saving up for the big things, it's actually nailing down the detail to know exactly what you've had come in that month, what you going have going out that month, and everything in between. So it's really getting granular with this information. And I talk about this because it's so important to know exactly how much you're spending. For me, having a budget and seeing those things going, going out of my account makes me realize, oh, um, I've spent way too much money on this particular area of my life this month. Why have I done that? What has it actually, what have I got for it? And I really make sure when I'm buying things now that it's gonna be something that's gonna help me live better, um, maybe be more productive, maybe something that I really, really want that I've like stepped on and thought about the, the purchase. And it's just something that's gonna enrich my life and it matches my values. And that's whenever I talk to you about products on here, it's something that I know is going to make your life easier, better, more productive, more enjoyable, something that's actually gonna benefit us. So those that budgeting exercise, and there are actually free downloadable printables on my website, which is larajoannajarvis.com. And I've got you covered. I've got debt tracker, savings tracker, budgeting. There's lots of different things, even Christmas planning sheets. So getting on top of your budget is something that's gonna change the whole game for you. So it's definitely a great first step if you're new to wondering how to live below your means. And of course, the next step, once you have done your budget, it's time to cut back. If you are spending money on lots of things that are in the same category, for example, TV subscriptions, we all know there's like so many now, and each one has like that key show that you don't wanna miss, but there's areas in our life that we can definitely cut back on. So I'm not talking about not going for dinner with your best friends, if that is your tradition for the month. I'm not talking about grabbing your favorite drink after work because that is something that really brings you joy. You may well live alone and actually that is the one chance of the day that you get to have some really nice community feel with your friends and peers. I'm just talking about the things that slowly do add up and creep in that you don't quite notice and cutting back on these things. Hopefully you're not gonna make a massive impact on your well-being because there's no point being savvy with money and creating a great budget and living below your means if you're gonna be miserable. So it is about finding that fine line between the two. 
is actually making sure you're enjoying your life, making sure that you know what you're spending and actually if you're overspending in an area, in an area then you can reduce it. And look, even if you are spending in an area quite highly, then what about looking at more affordable options for this spending? Maybe you can look at somewhere that's gonna be cheaper for dining out if your dining out is your key thing that you want to enjoy or something, you know, going out still but enjoying soft drinks rather than alcohol. These little tweaks to your budget can really, really add up and help you live below your means. Okay, so next Next up, tips to live below your means is to differentiate where your wants lay and where your needs lay. So obviously you need to have housing costs, uh, water, electricity, food costs. These are the needs, you have to have these things. But then when we're talking about your wants, these could be a bit more fluid in changing. You know, if you have a little bit more money one month, maybe you wanna put it into saving in a sinking fund, which I have talked about recently on this channel, and I will link for you in the description bar. Sinking funds are amazing because the wants are important, you know, like the holidays, you want a holiday, you want a new outfit for a night out, for your birthday. There's things in life that we will want to spend money on, but it's knowing that you can maybe add this money each month to a sinking fund to get you to that financial goal. And then once you do have the money, you can spend it guilt-free because the worst thing is that regret of buying something. But if you know that you've allocated those funds to something that you want to buy and it's important to you, then once you get there, you can buy it. But it's not getting into debt for those wants that aren't actually the necessities that you have to be buying each month. Along with budgeting and tracking your spending, it's really important to notice your triggers. So we've talked about this a lot on this channel, spending triggers, mindful money habits. It's really, really important to have that realization or that check in that self-reflection that you know what's causing you to spend money either uncontrollably or without actually intention. So for example, we talk about this, it's emotional triggers. So are you happy? It can't, it's not always a bad thing. Are you sad? Are you bored? Are you lonely? Are you excited about something? All these triggers are something that you can actually control rather than letting them control you. So it's about knowing where you're overspending or what time of day, for example, and instead of scrolling on your phone at night, pick up a book, do a meditation, do some journaling, do something that's gonna take your attention away from scrolling and buying things and not actually intentionally doing this. Just tracking your expenses can really, really help with this because once you see how many trips to, I don't know, Amazon or ASOS or whatever it is you're buying or on your bank statement, it's a little bit of a shock factor real to realize that actually you could cut back in that area. If you are enjoying this video, guys, I'd really love to have you here as a subscriber for more money saving videos, financial well-being videos. I would love to have you here in this community. So don't forget to subscribe and give it a like if you are enjoying it. The next one, my friends, is to prioritize saving. For me, when I started prioritizing myself and saving first, before I bought anything else, after the non-negotiables, obviously your mortgage, your rent, your bills, your groceries, these things you need to buy. But once I've done that, I pay myself first. I'm not waiting till the end of the month when all the money has been spent on other things to save money. I prioritize the saving around 20% is a great starting point if you can afford to. And by no means are you always gonna be ready to take these tips from the top and start doing them all. Sometimes you may well be working towards this. So it may well be a year off before you can even start to think about saving 5% of your income. But all of these are gonna help you get there. So just remember when you watch these videos, everyone is on a different trajectory, a different story, a different lifestyle, different earnings, different age, different family life, you know, there's, people that may be watching this that have got no children, more disposable income, they earn a bit better money, they've worked for longer, you know, there's, you can't judge yourself and other people as with everything in life, don't compare yourself to others because it is the thief of joy. Uh, but it's just about knowing how this can work for you. And then once you have started saving for yourself, either in sinking funds, which is a great way for buying things that are the fun money, the exciting things, the holidays, the new cars, anything that you may well be saving for, we need to be also really prioritizing the emergency fund. And I know you may well not have enough income to be paying for that, but you must work towards this as like your key goal to get to as an emergency fund because if anything should go wrong and you don't have the emergency fund to fall back on, it's gonna come into the overdraft or a loan and you're gonna get into debt. So making sure that you can actually save and pay yourself first is gonna slowly get those extra amazing habits to get to that point. One thing that I do use that I've spoken about on here before and that I love is Plum. It is an AI sort of in 
really intelligent saving app and you don't have to do anything. You can just literally log in to the app. I'll link it below because I do use it all the time. Well, it sort of, it uses my bank. I don't actually ever need to look at it, but it saves money without me noticing. So every month, if it thinks I know, it knows what bills I've got coming out and what income is in there, it will say, you can afford four pounds this week. I'm gonna take it out of your account. You won't even notice it's gone and then it'll add up. And I haven't touched it yet because I'm saving it up for a holiday but the money is there for when I need it. And it's hundreds and hundreds of pounds and I honestly have not noticed it going. They also do things like roundups where you can, um, you know, if you buy something, it's pound eighty-three. they'll save the 17p, blah, blah, blah. So it's a really good app to do it without noticing. And I will leave you my link in the description bar. I don't use the paid subscription, it's a free app. I don't know what the benefits are of the paid one, but I do love the free app. Now, this is a tricky one because sometimes it's unavoidable, but to avoid debt, is really, really important when it comes to living below your means because if you are gonna be buying things that you don't need that you're putting on credit, then you're gonna get into debt and then it's just creating these really bad habits when you have to pay it back because you may not have the money to pay it back. And it's just about really trying to rein in any spending that you don't have to do. I'm all for the spending on the nice things, the, the fun money. It, it, life is for living and enjoying, but it's about being sensible. If you can't afford to buy it and it, and it isn't a necessity, then think about saving longer term for it rather than buying it there and then getting into debt because the debt will mound up and you're not prioritizing yourself. You're not sort of, it's like that self-sacrifice almost because you're not prioritizing your future self because of a top that you want or a some, one thing that actually you could save for a couple of months and then buy it outright without credit. And if you are gonna get credit, because it's not always a bad thing, there is really good benefits to having credit cards and I have credit cards and I buy things on it every single month, but the key is to pay it off every single month so you're not getting any crazy APR repayment and it's really good for your credit rating as well because it can show that you borrow money and you can pay it back. So. They are good, they're not all bad, but make sure they don't control you. Make sure you can pay them off in full each month. Okay, so when it comes to living below your means and you are buying things, we need to buy stuff, I buy stuff, I love to you know, have nice things that I've been saving for if they're gonna bring me joy and value to my life and they, and they are in line with my values. But it's about looking around before you buy things. I will never buy without cash back, ever. If it's there, I'm using it, it's just, literally a habit that I would never forget to use now. And I think lots of people sign up with, um, I'll, I'll link you below my top cashback sign up link, which is again, I don't use the premium membership, it's a free um, site and it is, it's just a no brainer for me. Like I would never not use it because it just makes no sense to not be paid if I'm buying things. And it's not just the things, you know, you may not be buying products, but car insurance, travel insurance, um, your train tickets, your hotels, your food shop, your gadgets, anything that you are buying that you need, make sure you're using cash back for. It's just a no brainer. I, yeah, I linked below my, my sign up link if you wanna use it. There's usually a promotion on, so it's usually like 10 or 15 pounds that you get as free cash back when you start. But what I was gonna say with that is often people sign up and then they don't ever use it. So it's just getting into the habit of using it. Get the Chrome extension, top cash back Chrome extension, put it into Google, it'll find it for you. Or get the app on your phone and literally you just put in the shop or the product that you want into the actual top cashback app or website and then it will take you through and it will just track the purchase. It does take a little while to come through, but again, I use it, save it in there and I use it for big things throughout the year. Okay, big one. And Stu and I were talking about this earlier actually because I think we're so out of the loop with takeaways and things like that that we just don't assume, don't realize people use it so much. Using Deliveroo, it's, no, it's never been simpler to get a takeaway like a morning coffee or like dinner. And I feel that so many people use these now that I, it's crazy how much money must people must spend on it. And don't get me wrong, if a Friday night takeaway with the family and your favorite program is your ritual and that's enriching your life, go for it, honey. I'm not saying don't do it, but it's just checking in. Do we need to be doing it every day? Do we need to be doing it every week? Can you maybe reduce there? because living below your means sometimes means sacrifice, a lot of the time means sacrifice, and if it means not having Deliveroo or Uber Eats or whatever it is, I'm not saying never do it, but just 
keep on track of how much you are doing it. Along with this, cooking from home is such a good way of living below your means. Literally today, I had leftovers from two nights ago, and then yesterday was the leftovers as well. And one meal has done me three, one lot of cooking has done me three meals. And I just did a video on my Instagram, which was five meals under five pounds. Really quick, really delicious and so healthy under five pounds and it's lasted me five days. So you can do it, it is harder to cook on a budget, but doing this and cooking from scratch is gonna save you lots of money and help live you, live you, help you live below your means. Okay, so living below your means and lifestyle inflation are things that are the key mindsets that you need to keep on top, top of and keep a check of because as your salary may go up in life, great, or maybe you've gone back to work after being on maternity leave or maybe you've got a better job, whatever it is, if your salary is going up, you still can live below your means. So don't allow lifestyle creep, which means, you know, the bigger house, the bigger car, the more expensive things, the uh, takeaways more or whatever it may be. Don't let that negate the extra salary because it's, as I said before, it just sort of goes like this and you end up still spending more than you earn, even though you earn more than you used to. And it's just never ending. Living below your means is even more important when you start earning more money because it's just making sure you don't let that creep up and then negate any extra money that you actually have coming in. And then another way of living below your means is to look for free entertainment. This is so easy, especially now the weather is getting better. It's beautiful out there this week. And for us, you know, it's jumping on the bike, getting a picnic packed up, going on a bike ride. Even if you stop for like a Coke at the pub on the way and it may maybe make it a more social thing with friends, there's so many things that you can do for free now. Cinema tickets through um, Compare the Market or something like that, or maybe it's free uh, exhibitions at art galleries or museums or free days out just there's so many things out there that you can do for free like I said the other day in a video you don't have to be using like doing the expensive things to enjoy the day I think with slow living and money saving one of the things I'm really loving is just enjoying the free things in life like nature being outside that sort of things all free and actually so enjoyable once you allow yourself to have gratitude for those things because you start realizing how amazing they are and how lovely they are to do so hopefully that's given you some actual advice to live below your means let me know in the comments what else you would like me to cover in this sort of financial well-being series that i do and how i talk about money and money saving and if you have got any additional ideas let us know in the comments because i know lots of my community love to read the comments and get more ideas and chat through them with you guys and you're so supportive of other people so thank you for that. It does take discipline and it takes difficult reduction in what you're doing perhaps or just conscious changes and it may well take time to adjust but it is so beneficial in the long run. Set yourself goals of what you want to do even if it's just to get out of debt. That is a huge goal to get to and then once you've done that moving on throughout that it's just gonna bring so much amazing financial well-being the stress of debt and the overwhelming feeling of just d difficulty and like it's weighing down on you is horrible but with these tips hopefully we can start to get our, you know live below our means and actually save money and start working towards your next goal so thank you for being here guys really appreciate you watching the video i really do hope you enjoyed it subscribe if you liked it and i'll see you guys really soon for the next one take care